How's everyone? How's everyone? Hey, Tico, how are you? So today... Doing well, how are you? Very good. So today we have another episode of uh, 3 Charts at 3 p.m. We have Tito, and he is a veteran. Tito, where, where, are you, in the Air, you were in the Air Force, right? Yes, I was. 20 in years. Force, um, how many years in the Air Force? 20. 20 years. So Tito works here at Data Meaning. He's one of us, one friend of us here at Data Meaning. And he's also a consultant like Aaron and I. And we invited Tito because we wanted to have, you know, someone here for the military because today we're going to discuss uh, data visualizations related to the military. This is the second part of the military uh, episode that we had. It was a very successful episode. And we think that, you know, military is so important um, to understand, to recognize individuals like Tito. And, and like I said, always thanks for their services. Thanks for the service of Tito. 20 years in the military. I'm very proud of, of people like Tito here. And I myself have many members of my family that were in the military and there's some that are still in the military. And I'm very proud of them. And, and it's so important for us here in the US to recognize and to honor uh, the military. So we're gonna have data visualizations related to the military because uh, believe it or not, there is so many out there and they're super interesting. and. There's so many things that you can do with this type of data. And I'm gonna show you something really quick that I found that I thought that it was super cool. I was talking with Tito before the show about this. And as you can see, this was for, uh, this is for the New Jersey National Guard COVID-19 dashboard. It's actually called like that. If you can see on the top uh, of the dashboard, that's, that's the name of the dashboard. And as you can see, there is always so many, um, important things that the military is doing for us out there uh, for any decision that they that they are making they are creating reports they're creating dashboards data is part of the military and that's what we want to you know make sure that us as a data visualization developers or if you're just starting out with data visualization that you can you can use this data to to learn to do it better but it's definitely super interesting data um, another thing that I wanted to, to quickly uh, show everyone is there is so many uh, data visualizations related to the military. In this case, I found this uh, the other day that is called 16 Memorial Day Infographic to Honor or Veterans. And this was much amazing. I'm going to put this, uh, this uh, link on the chat uh, soon. But as you can see here, to give you an idea, uh, some of this, uh, there were so many really cool military uh, data visualizations, especially this one for me. Uh, it was super interesting. It has 4,000 views. And this is post matrix stress disorder, military, I think it says pathway or something, or health. And you can see so many interesting military data visualizations that you can find out there. Um, I just wanted to see, to show you guys, the hardest war is up online. I'm sorry, at home, I'm sorry. And you can see this is or war veterans are homeless. And this is something else, you know, we want to bring in to your attention, how important it is to know and to help the military. Um, so just wanted to, to give that to you, I mean, to everyone that is watching or if you're watching or uh, a replay, Please let, let me know. I mean, if you want to be part of the show and, and discuss information or data like this, let us know. So if you've never been in the show, what we do is we bring data visualizations that are that none of us have seen before. And we just start discussing these visualizations as if we understand them or not, what do we like and how can we make them better? Today is just data visualizations related to the military. And we're going to start with the one from Tito. So I'm going to bring the data solution from Tito. Um, one second. Um, let's see. Oh, Tito, can you, can you uh, actually um, show uh, share yours? Um, and then we can go back there. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'm going to put it in. Uh, let me see. The, oh, perfect. I don't put it in the chat. Yep. Awesome. 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 So let's see. So if you oh, if you're in the chat, you can also let us know what you think about this uh, data visualization. Any comments that you have, anything that you want to share with us, uh, put it out there in the chat too. So Tito, tell me a little bit about the visualization, where you found it, and what what do you wanted to bring it to to our attention? 
Okay, so uh, I went on to Tableau Public. There were so many, so many different places or so many different uh, dashboards that I found that were related to veterans, um, military stuff. Mostly it was homelessness, uh, medical stuff, you know, disability and all that. Um, but I found this and I thought it was interesting because I was looking for something that had a little bit more visualization to it. And this was on Tableau Public, but there's not a lot of vis not a lot of visits on this thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, a thing that caught my eye, I'm a mm -hmm. grammar Nazi. So it says Veterans Day, like possessive or, you know, <laughs> so it's actually veterans plural and there's not mm -hmm. supposed to be apostrophe, but whatever. So no, no apostrophe there? No. And then also the the little silhouette soldier, unless he's facing the other way and his back is to us, he's saluting with the wrong hand. But whatever. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> Great catch. Yeah. And his hand's a little bit high for a salute. So I don't know. Maybe he's just holding his hat on. I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's missing his he's, he's missing hands too. But yeah, yeah. So anyway, um the the thing that I that I saw about this was like uh, things I was looking at were um, oh like the income um, toward the bottom left it says veterans earn more so I know from my experience um, from retiring from the military in in 2015 and then going into my first civilian job mm -hmm. I had to go in as an entry level um, and part of it is because I didn't have some of the technical skills that they're looking for but and then i also didn't really have experience working in the civilian workforce so i came in as as an entry-level guy and you know with the entry-level pay 40 years old you know first job working with people half my age it was very interesting but um i know that i know median income you're taking a whole lot and then say hey this is the median but man i was a lot less than that right there <laughs> so the thing is i would want to be interested in seeing a little bit more detail like okay you know you have veterans versus all but then veterans you know when we served in the military there are some who are who are uh, officers and some who are enlisted and then like what are what are their what's their income look like after they get out versus you know the rest of everybody else also, what types of careers, um, you know, the and also the types of education that people would have because that's it's so vague, it's so broad that mm -hmm. um, for you to be able to go, oh, okay, yeah, you know, all veterans, the median income, you know, and it doesn't really give a lot of insight. Exactly. Tito, is it possible you make it a little bit larger so that people can uh, see it? So you sure. can increase it. The, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So you see, is this from the National Association of Realtor, Aaron? What do you think? So I just want to, people in the chat, people that are, are watching, you know, sometimes we bring visualizations like this because we want to make them better, right? Like that's what Tito wanted to bring this to say, hey, how can we make this one better? Because there is a lot of, that he he wanted it to be a lot better. This can, this is something that we can improve for sure. Uh, so Aaron, what, what do you think? What was his first impression? Yeah, so I'm I'm uh, I, I clicked on that link and I'm on the Tableau Public website to to look at this dashboard, and uh, what what I would like to have seen is if you clicked on um, any any of the bars that it would filter the rest of the page, but it doesn't. So right. like I wanted to see 35 to 40 to 54 year old veterans. If I clicked on that, where does where do they fall within that with within these ranges? Uh, the I struggled for a second to figure out what was blue and what was gray. And I just see that mm -hmm. they, they have a column for the, for that color, which doesn't, you, you don't really need that. You can just put mm -hmm. a single veterans in all color, like a color legend. And then you can remove that entire column from both of those. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of the, one of the other things I noticed was there, there's a lot of like text and numbers on here, but then, then there's two random visuals. Like you would have thought that, you know, if you want to visualize this data, that anything on the right hand side would have been visualized in some some way. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just looking at a number and looking at another number and you're trying to compare the variance between the two uh, and do that math in your head. So I, I would mm -hmm. like to see more visuals of, of the data that they're trying to show. Yep. 
no, that's 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 true. There there is a lot of text here. Um, I think that it's not really telling the story of like for example when I was looking at Veterans Day, right, Dito, and I said in other ones that we we were showing you and that we have uh, for later. When you're saying Veterans Day, you may want to see what is the history of Veterans Day, right? What if, mm -hmm. like, if that title could, like, what I wanted to see is Veterans Day, what? The, the history of Veterans Day or what? Tell me something about Veterans Day. But in here, it's more like kind of like the population of Veterans Day and then some demographic. So it should be, the title could be better for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There, James Emery in the chat, he said, they don't adjust for age. As shown earlier, veterans are older, so are usually further in their career. Hmm. So that means that the James is that means you're talking about the salary when Tito was talking about the salary, maybe. Um, so, yeah, Tito, when you were mentioned that, like when you mm -hmm. it says veterans earn more, mm -hmm. I'm seeing that's like 72 versus all. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering. Uh, so veterans, for, for uh, you know, I, I'm not in the military, so correct me if I'm wrong, have been in the military for numerous years. Yes. Right? What's the all mean? Does, does, is that is that people that, that is that entry level meaning as they come in? Is that is that the all average or the, the all median for what age range? What, how, what, what I don't know what that what that comparison is to. And, mm -hmm. and again, you can you can go 10 years in the military. You can go, you can go 30 mm -hmm. years in the military. It, that if someone is in the 30 and they're in this this data, they're obviously going to skew that because they're much higher than than most everybody stays in the military. So yeah. it's a little okay. a little confusing. And again, it doesn't it doesn't line up with what your uh, account was. Yeah. All I know is that I took like a thirty thousand dollar pay cut to get my first civilian job. <laughs> <laughs> I was I well, well into that median income range for all veterans. I see. So James is saying that most of these stats are age relevant. Okay. Okay. So you can see the age of owners, veteran buy home later in their life. It says veteran 69.4 versus 57.5. Buy home later in their life. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I believe that because uh, there are several several career fields across you know all the branches that would have us move all the time so people don't want to buy houses if you're active duty you know you uh you're you're not wanting to buy a house where you know you have to turn around and sell it in two years or three years uh, i know that i bought a house when i was active duty because where i was stationed it was a specialty aircraft and the majority of the people that i worked with were there for like really long term i was stationed at Robbins Air Force Base, Georgia, I was stationed there for 10 and a half years on the dot, June 17th, 1999 to December 17th, 2009. And when I left, I left guys there who had been stationed there for 13, 17, and 20 years. And so people in, in that unit, man, we bought houses. Everybody bought houses because they're like, oh, I'm not going anywhere. But I know several people who moved every two years and they're like, I'm not going to buy a house till I retire. And it's like 40, 42, 44 years old, whatever it is. So, yeah, I, I get that. I see. No, no, definitely. Look, James have a very good point, Aaron and Tito. He said all, they, when they said whole here in the visualization, it says, is the population as a whole. Not clear is that is over 18 population as a whole. That's true. Because it, it needs more explanation of what that means, right? It's right. hard to tell right here uh, what that means. And then Brandon, uh, he said, pay cut, pay cut plus increased living costs. In my case, as soon as I cross the border of California, the DMV let me know I will be liable three thousand in taxes <laughs> for a vehicle I have purchased and paid off two years before. Wow, it's true. Yeah. Email. Yeah, we we've talked about this before about personalizing a dashboard so that, that people are in you know emotionally invested in it. Um, mm -hmm. So you know the, the the how you can do that is to like instead of just uh, stating a subject, you can put it in a mm -hmm. sentence. So for example, let's look at the in the upper right hand corner. It lists 
home ownership rate. And then it's followed with better with the fact they want you to know. Mm-hmm. And they, they do that for, for each one of those. They, mm-hmm. they almost could have gotten rid of that first line, get rid of home ownership rate, get rid of mm-hmm. age of owners, get rid of home, mm-hmm. house, just get rid of that first line and tell us the fact that you want us to know about uh, because you don't need to list both of them. Yeah, Sorry, there's a lot of waste space here. And it would free up more room to do more visuals. but More visuals, correct. And, and the visual in the middle doesn't do anything, right? I don't know. It doesn't really do anything. That's, and, and it's even probably wrong, like Tito it, said. Yeah, especially <laughs> if, it's, if it's not accurate. That's that. So immediately his eye is probably drawn to, to being annoyed that that's incorrect and not paying attention to the numbers and the data. Yeah, that and veterans with an apostrophe. Right. <laughs> um, the... The uh, in the chat, Andrew Kim said something about uh, VA loans, and so you know, yeah, I would like to see how you know effective that that uh, program is. I know that I use the VA loan, mm-hmm. um, and over the years, I've bought three houses, um, not all at the same time. VA loan only allows you to to use it on on one house at a time or one loan at a time. So my first and my second house, I bought using VA loan, and it was great. There was a little bit more paperwork you have to do here and there, whatever, but it was nice, uh, especially when I was junior enlisted, trying to buy a house that I wasn't sure that I was, you know, had great enough credit for, and the VA backed the loan, so I was good to go. Absolutely. There is, a, I have another visualization, I'm looking at it here, right, it says that um it says that uh that there is actually not a lot of people that take advantage of that for some reason right and that um 90 percent of those with ba loans are with zero money down seems like 20 percent of veterans never heard of that and it says that less than eight percent of veterans are women however an overwhelming majority of them are homeowners um, that's pretty cool. And the average loan it's around 196, 196,000 as the average loan home amount. Hmm. So you know, James has, James has a good point here in the comments uh, mm-hmm. about misinterpreting the age of the home buyers because the stat is the median age of a home owner, not the median age of a home buyer. Mm-hmm. I saw that too. Yeah, I saw that. I was trying to figure that out. Like, are they talking about? somebody who's like a new homeowner or newly a homeowner or is it you know what where where in the, the timeline is that yeah my, but, like, my mind went to new like the, like the age of a, a new home buyer not just an owner of the home right and then um so the the data that emil was talking about that makes me think that i wish there was something on here that did show the um the VA loan stuff because um, mm-hmm. so like closer to the bottom right it talks about or I don't know middle right it's mm-hmm. veterans own less expensive homes so mm-hmm. if most veterans are doing a VA loan with mm-hmm. zero down zero down it means your payment's going to be bigger you know mm-hmm. so um, I would maybe want to see something about um, if, if that's the case is that is what's making the uh, the median value of veterans' homes lower, you know, something like that. Yep. Correct. So anything else, Aaron, that you can see here that we can talk about or you guys wanted to move to the, I can, I can show you this really quick that I found. Yeah, yep. yep. I'm good on my end. Let me show you something really quick that I found. You, uh, this is for, I, I want to do this for Tito, like he can see, look Tito, this is one that I found. He says, so look at VA home loans and look at how cool is this. So you can see VA home loan guarantee by fiscal year, right? But what I think is this is great. Um, 96,000 veterans, active duty personnel, selective reserve, national guards, achieve a dream home. And then it says uh, VA interest rate reduction, 88%. Oh, that's Mayor, yeah. Very interesting information for uh, wow. VA loans. Yeah. Using a gradient pie chart. I'm can, not can sure. We, yeah. can, we, can we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, you can talk about that. You can you can you can you can kill it if you want to. And look, this is the it says, let me see. Center. 
not sure what this is. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I'm going to have to look at that. But Oh, selected monthly homeowner costs, basic allowance for housing. Look at that. Of course, California, super high. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So as a, as a member of the military, you mm -hmm. get a basic allowance for subsistence, that's BAS, and ba basic allowance for housing, that's BAH. Uh -huh. And it's supposed to help you live off the local economy. Uh, in years past, there were, um, you know, there's every, every military installation, almost, maybe not every, but most military installations had housing uh, that were, you know, first come, first serve. And there were areas where it was newer houses, bigger houses for the higher rate people, and then the smaller, uh, not so great houses for the, you know, junior enlisted and stuff. And then throughout the years, the, um, the DOD decided, hey, you know, these are really old houses and it's taking a lot more money to maintain them than it would to just knock them all down and then have a, a privatized contractor come in here. Mm -hmm build some homes. And then, so that's what they did. They knocked down a lot of the houses. So a bunch of us who lived on base were like, Hey, mass exodus. And we bought, we all bought houses. And then, um, they built all these new houses on the base and allowed the military to live in there, but then they would take their BAH. And so for a lot of people, it was a lot cheaper to live on base and pay, you know, your whole BAH than to live off base pay your whole BAH plus, you know, a quarter of your paycheck to be able to live in the town. Mm. That's awesome. The, so we have, uh, a, Andrew King say at least it arranged by the pie chart. It's arranged by percentage with the highest percentage starting at 12 o'clock. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so I'm going to show you guys my biz. I think it's really interesting. <laughs> it's related to women in the military. And uh, let me see. I, I think everybody will love it. I really think I, I like it. Uh, I, I think that it was something unique, different. Um, I was very interested in this area here. Oh, they did this. And this is women on, of war female soldiers of the front line. Um, I selected this because I was looking for something different. I was looking for something, you know, I, there is so much out there, so many data visualizations and related to the military, but I was, I, I always like, like to bring things related to data plus women. And I wanted to bring something that it was maybe a little different than everything else that I found. And this one was, very different so what do you what do you what do you, what do you think aaron uh let you want me to, um, let, let me do you want me to show uh bring in the let me see if i can home yeah i'm gonna share the in in the in the chat i'm going to share the uh the link to that infographic and they do the same thing here so um what what do you think one second, let me share. Okay. Let me Just share the like, group is. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger for everyone. Oh, let's see. Let's see. make it bigger, make it smaller. <laughs> um, I I like the colors used, although I mean I'm 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 not familiar with military colors. I know mm. uh, that camouflage look is a military look, but not for every branch, so at least for me, I, it, it, the, the colors are simple, just using them basically a green and yellow. Uh, there's lots, there's a couple of pie charts down there. To, uh, obviously, I'd change that. Yeah, that olive drab pretty much covers everybody, I would think. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, you know, just being a veteran, if I see something olive drab, I think, oh, is that military? What is, yeah. uh, Emil, what is the, oh, and there, there I was able to blow it up. I'm trying, I'm trying to look at these, the bars that you said you were interested in. I'm trying to see, are those, uh, yeah, so are those, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, here it says active duty, reserve, national guard. 
And what this does is active duty, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and total active. And I kind of like like it because I never never had yeah. anything or seen anything that it could tell me. And, and I'm pretty sure Tito will like this. Except for Tito, for example, from the in the active duty in the Army, 13.5 percent are the percentage of women, and in mm -hmm. the Air Force, 19.2. So I thought that that was cool to see the difference between the all of them, and. For me, it was very interesting that the Navy have one, uh, it's a 16%. Yeah, so it's pretty high between the Navy and the Air Force. So I was kind of like uh, drawn to, to this area to see that, that difference. And in the reserve, you can see they're pretty high too. Uh, the Air Force 26.3. So for me, that was really cool. Yeah, um, I would like to be. Oh, sorry. I would uh, be interested to see what the actual numbers are, because you know, with the percentages, it can kind of be misleading. So, mm -hmm. okay, typically mm -hmm. the army and the navy. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys out there. Um, the army and the navy are a lot bigger than mm -hmm. the marines and the air force. Mm -hmm. um, even though so, you know, I know my marine friends don't like to say that the Marines are part of the Navy, but you know, whatever. Um, the, the, the Air Force is, uh, it's, um, and then it's like, uh, what year was this? Because um, there have been, you know, drawdowns, there's like surges and all that stuff. So there's the, the population of our fighting force grows and shrinks depending on, you know, administrations or what's going on in the world. So a, a question, uh, Tito, maybe you can answer this. So I'm looking at the Air Force one for active duties, 19.2, and the 26.3% in the reserve. Mm -hmm. If you added those up, does that give us a total number of women, both active and reserve? Mm. Is that how you read this? I'm not sure you can do that because mm. I think this is out of the, like out of all the people that are in reserve, and all the people that are reserved within the Air Force, for example, uh, 26.3. I'm not sure you should. I'm, I'm, I don't think you should. Um, yeah, no, because there's do. there's a lot less reserves, I believe, than mm -hmm. there are okay. duty. Okay, so yeah. So, so your point is, yeah, the number is relevant because, like, I added yeah. it up and it was it was like 46 percent, which didn't didn't quite. I wouldn't think it would be that close to 50-50. Uh, but that makes sense. If, the, if it's, if, uh, the reserves is, is a different size group than the active duty, then yeah, that adding percentages together doesn't make sense. You're right. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really like, and, and, and Andrew in the chat, he said the same thing is this one here below. This are the, if I'm not, let me see, I'm, I don't know, think they are. It's a military conflicts. I'm not sure if they're medals, but I'm, I don't think. Well, the, maybe he meant just like the the form, the shape of them makes it look like each one's a medal. Mm, correct. Yeah. But I don't think they are. I think this is more. Um, they look like them. Yeah, they look like, but I'm not sure. But, it, but it's cool that you can see that it will tell you really quick, OK, uh, World War II, World War II, 400,000, right? How many women were in each conflict? And then you can see that you can compare one to the other, right? Um, and then you can see that uh, World War One, World War, World War Two, but then, uh, for example, the invasion of Granada or the invasion of Panama, like very, it was probably very short, so there were not that many. But um, it, it's cool to see the differences. Um, and then here, here you have at the end to the right the Operation Desert Storm, and it's 2009. Uh, it says that uh, they're talking about Afghanistan, yeah. But it's still, I mean, I, I thought it was cool the 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 use of color was it was good. I mean, it makes sense, um, easy to understand. If you think about it, there's not that many colors here. They're just pretty much green and yellow. Yeah, on those on those bars, 
Mm -hmm. you know, it looks like the silhouette in the background of those bars are bullets. Are bullets, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A different, that's a different kind of bullet chart. <laughs> you can, you yeah. Know. I, um, I liked the, the area above the metals to the mm -hmm. right where it brought to light the divorce rate. I know that's like, why would I like the divorce rate? That's not it. It's that it shows some of the difficulties that we as military mm -hmm. members go through. Uh, being right. gone all the time, it's tough to really establish a, a marital relationship. It's tough right. to really take care of all the all the family things that you have when you're gone all mm -hmm. the time. I know that, you know, I didn't I didn't deploy like the army did, like the army was deploying 18 months at a time. But my unit would go for uh it was like 60 to 120 days. Uh -huh. There was a, there was but there was like lead time on each side. The the longest I was gone was for like 88 days, then I came home for like 4 months and then I went again. Then I came home for 6 months, then I went again. And in the time where I was at home, it was tough to connect with my wife and like exactly. re-enter, you know, the the home life because for so long, you know, just worry about yourself, eat, sleep, work out, you know, work, all that stuff, and then you head home and then you have to reintegrate. And it's it's really tough. And I saw I saw so many of my friends, so many of my peers that got divorces. You know, i I'm I'm one of those. It was tough. No, it, it is definitely, and, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a one very good point, Tito, of things that you can do with data visualization. And to everybody that is watching or you're in the replay or watching right now, one of the things that got me at my attention personally um, was that when I was reading and looking at some of these visualizations, <coughs> I think you can definitely, they, they can be used to raise a voice, to, to fight for something better. Right, because for example, I found many and Tito. We, we talk about this related to homeless. You know, the, the, home, the many militaries that are homeless. So you can use you. You should use and everybody that like us that do data visualization. I think like we should use this to raise the voice to, to you know to to the government and to everybody that should help veterans because if you can if you look at the data and you study the data and read the data, you will see how many are maybe become homeless which makes no sense that should never happen uh that any military personnel that um you know are serving for the country in any country it doesn't have to be the us but no one should be become uh, homeless and that's something that i was i was thinking about and when i was looking at this very carefully um another thing that grew my attention was the where it says here military moms so this is on the right side i'm, I'm going to point you guys to where i'm talking about here so you can see here 5.3 of single parents are in the U.S. military and 12% of women in the army are single parents. But this one was more interesting. At least 25% of the military women who die while serving in Iraq or Afghanistan were mothers. I mean, super important. So you, you can read this information and, and seriously uh, start thinking about all of this, you know. I yeah, think you know, yeah, go ahead. What, what I like about this dashboard, or mm -hmm. just this visual, is that it, it tells a story. It, they mm -hmm. want to talk about women in war or women of war. It, it gives you the percentage for, for each of the divisions. It talks about mm -hmm. uh, military moms, the divorce rate, uh, the issue of sexual assault, which I think is, is important to have this up probably closer to the upper left-hand corner so that you know it draws the most attention. Uh, and then the, how many served in each of the uh, of the wars? I think it just overall, it does a good job of telling the story that they want. Mm -hmm. uh, they they do good, do great job with the colors. There are uh, someone who mentioned uh, pie charts with only two colors are is mm -hmm. acceptable, which is borderline, but here it works. You know, um, I I just think they do a good job of of trying to tell that story of of women of war. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Yeah, just want to let me see if anybody else from the chat. Um, we have uh, Matt say it will be great to see the numbers of applications versus approve it and then compare that to the age and gender. Okay, yeah, absolutely. But you yeah, know, this was one of many that, like I said, they're out there, they're really interesting. Anybody should, you know, if you like data, you should 
look at data related to the military because there's a lot of things that we all can do and do better and we can raise the voice uh, for the military we should um, since they're serving our country and you know we, we need to be grateful for their services so definitely is something that is very important um I'm going to then move with Aaron and see what Aaron have today for us. Uh, Aaron, let me, I'm going to turn off my screen, but thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, I got, a, no? I, got a, I got a couple to get through. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I'm, we're only to really discuss one unless you want to t talk about no. them. Through them. No, dude, you have time. You have time. You have time. All right. Plenty of time. Yeah. All right. All right, so the first one is not military related, but as I was looking for military things, I came across this. This is this is done by Ken. It's eighty four thousand plus pie charts. <laughs> He's a rebel. People know my my love for pie for pie charts, and th th they, these are all pie charts. Even out here, I've downloaded the workbook, and like everything is a, is a pie chart. Uh, but th they made art out of this, and it's just uh, just crazy. I, I love that kind of stuff. It looks like it rained on somebody's picture. <laughs> uh, so uh, just real quick on my military uh, history, my family, I, I personally didn't uh, serve, but my both of my grandparents did. My uh, grandfather, I did know, uh, was alive when I was alive. Uh, he served in World War II. Uh, he, he was a... Um, and a B B seventeen or B nineteen, not sure which one it is, but I think we get to it. Uh, and uh, he was over in Europe. And my other grandfather, which I never met, uh, he served in the army uh, that was going into the to the uh, to invade Japan. But uh, before they dropped the bombs, they were planning on uh, invading it and taking it over with ground forces. And and luckily, he didn't have to go and do that because the, you know the the, what happened and they dropped those atomic bombs and, and they didn't have to, to uh, spend a lot of uh, lives after that. Uh, so here they talked about the worst case scenarios and it said that the U.S. military expected resistance made preparations for between 1.7 and 4 million casualties with up to 800,000 dead. Wow. Between 5 and 10 million Japanese deaths were projected if we were to invade on foot. And my grandfather was but was one of those people that were, were going to go in to, to be that ground force. So luckily that didn't happen for him. So I could be here because that uh, chances of surviving something like that are not high. Uh, a couple more uh, things here. Uh, just things that I liked about some of these military visualizations that I saw. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at here is uh, world war one. And I like this timeline that they've got. Very up here. good. And you I hover like on, you can see, you know, how it started and then all the way to when it ended, everything in between. And here's, here's where we got involved. And uh, let's see, right, right there, 1917, January 1917. Uh, they have these, uh, you know, I think this is for women in the war and they've got cost of war. And it looks like they've got a, a sheet swapper here so that, that it just instantly changes on the screen. So it, it doesn't seem like you, you lose out on anything. You still have plenty of, plenty of room to... Yeah. Can you make it larger so we can, we can see? Do you have the link to it? I mean, I do. This isn't the one we were going to go over, so I'll, I'll just hold on to that. I'll, I'll zoom in. Okay. Uh, they've got these. I mean, this this is fun looking. I don't know if you kind of going to get anything out of it, but uh, they, got the, they have a map here with some hovering. Uh, just nice. just real, real interesting, the story that they were they were telling here. Uh, this one is 62,000 Australian men killed in the First World War. And here is, it's, it's simple. Each one of these, these flowers, which I think is the Australian national flower, I couldn't figure that out. It just stands for a person. So what they just yeah. found the data and, and listed every single person and threw them on a dashboard. No, this doesn't, this doesn't show you a lot. It just, but it does show you the breadth of, of what 62,000 lives lost kind of looks like. So I like so, that simplistic. So, so Tito, this is like a memorial, right? In that visualization, yeah. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. I never seen something like that. That's incredible. Right? It's kind of like um, mm -hmm. could it be It'd be like so, so I, I have an example when I, uh, when they opened the World War II memorial in DC, I flew out there to, to meet my parents and my and my grandfather for okay. World War II. 
they've got for this and, and for the Korean War and for the Vietnam War, they have walls with just names all over the place. Exactly. So this is a, a virtual view of that. It's it, you know, it'd be nice maybe if you, if you had the ability to search for a name if you knew somebody that died. Right. This is World War One, so probably not a lot of people around that, that knew anybody, but. It's just like that, where it's like a, a wall of remembrance. Wow. Yeah, or a, a date filter, something. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Uh, this next one is uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Okay. And what I liked about this one, uh, there's a couple of things I didn't even know, and it was just as I was glancing at it. What I liked is they did a timeline of that day. Again, again, this timeline is, is uh, yeah. perfect. So, so they, and then Ooh. on each point, you can see what happened at that time. And here they return back to their uh, uh, their ships. I, I think in, for, you know, since the show, you know, we, we're always talking about data visualization and everybody in the chat, please comment. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense to use this type of visualization where you're talking about anything or any data that it's related to history. Like, for example, you're talking about you have some data and you're you're doing a, I don't know, dashboard or anything that you're doing and you're working with some type of history data or anything that you want to, you know, plot in the kind of like some visual to see that seems like this is this is being used more over and over. That looks like that's something that can definitely be easy to understand. So like this one's neat. This one's neat because you can see at 610, the first planes take off and then you can see because they colored it red. To, to make it stand out, that's when the attack started at 7.55. So you can see the time between those, those two things. Okay. Uh, I, down here, they, they, they have each of the, of the ships, uh, but they said of the 100 ships that were present, 60, 66 were undamaged, and most only took minor damage. Only six mm -hmm. ships actually sank, and that surprised me because I, did I didn't know that. that I didn't that, know that either. A few mm -hmm. ships, and then down here it says, Half of the Americans killed were aboard just the USS Arizona. Also, okay. didn't I, I had no idea that it was it was a, the big, large majority of them were from one single boat. Yeah, this isn't the rice or chips, right? That's like an image of the chip. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah so these these are probably the the ship types because I think like these look a little different than than this one. Uh, but yeah, so so you see the probably all the gray are the undamaged. Uh, these. Kind of the light colored are the the damage, and these yeah. are the ones that sh that sank. You can see which ones, yeah, sunk, and then yeah. if it's gray, undamaged, and then uh, damaged. Yeah, it's so and interesting. Down here they, kind of, they, they kind of do the same thing. So they talk about four hundred two planes, one hundred eighty eight destroyed, and one hundred fifty nine wow. damaged. Look, look, these are the only ones that didn't have any damage to them. Yeah, it's just the, the planes just got taken out. And then if you look on the Japanese side, the, nearly all of them all survived and were able to, to come back uh, where they launched from. I, I like this his story, the story, like how they, they put it together. I, I mean, it's yeah, cool. there's 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 a lot more, but I, I just like the the use of images or, you know, these 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 pictures, yeah. the to, icons, to yeah. the story and the three colors to, to tell the, just the three things and this of uh, this fact and and. Um, uh, you know, it's just I, I love this timeline. So again, uh, just an example of, of one of the things that, uh, the many things I liked about this. Yeah, I like seeing the like the overlaid map, uh, the orientation of the ships. Mm -hmm. My my great uncle was on the USS Maryland uh, on December 7, 1941, and he caught some shrapnel, and um, he served like thirty plus years in the U.S. Navy, but. Um, the, I read that the Maryland didn't take as much damage as a lot mm -hmm. of them because it was next to the, the USS Oklahoma, which took okay. nine torpedoes. Yeah, there it is. The Oklahoma, right there. Oh, yeah, look, right, right there. Yep. And, yeah, and the Oklahoma was further out here, and this was closer to land. Yeah. I don't know if that makes made a difference or not, but... I think... Um, I don't know, depending if like the if the zeros were coming from, you know, south and they were launching their torpedoes that way, I guess that makes a difference. I don't know. Yeah, like this way. Yeah. Which way they're coming from. That would that would also like I don't know which way they came from. Zooming out, obviously it's they probably came from this direction. Yeah. Uh yeah, probably up the channel there. 
Oh, then Very it would have cool. been sheltered by the land. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of in that co- in the cove a little bit. Uh, then here, the, it's using the tableau story to kind of talk about the aerial bombings. Um, again, they, they're using the the plane icons instead of just a dot or mm-hmm. what we know of. Uh, I, I did like that you can select uh, which, plane. Oh. which plane it was. So, like, my grandfather was in a B-17. So I can see, you know, where it took off, uh, what month. They don't give counts. Like, I know, I'd like to know, like, how many, but... I thought that was interesting. They have the by location. So they've got this map here and you can, oh. you can change it. it. It doesn't really work real well. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to change the, that, but uh, you can play it. You can look at a tar- target city. You can zoom in on any of this stuff too. If you wanted to look like what's, what's going on here, what big cities are in this area. Interesting. So I like I like that. Total weight of bombs. Uh, mm-hmm. So what I was found interesting on this one is, so it's got each of the countries and then a total weight of bombs dropped per country. So it's just That's alphabetical. Incredible. You can see, wow. obviously, Germany and then France, Italy, not not much in Japan, which just surprised me it was as, as low as it was. So, but those, those are the ones that were dropping there or that they... Drop somewhere else. I mean, drop, drop. So dropped on those countries. Okay. Okay. Wow. No. And then they have the weight of those bombs dropped per aircraft type. So the one that my grandfather was in was the was the highest at eight hundred nine thousand tons. It would be nice that if the default sort on that was the most to the least. I don't because it's you, having to go look for um the highest you know and you just keep scrolling yeah and i can't get to it either. let's see let's see if just let me do it here let's try this there we go there but yeah, to, your, to your point if you could do it by default yes that that yeah. might be a little easier to look this, at this makes more sense correct yeah yeah and then it's so it's a uh, high explosives way so then it's the most the weight of the bombs is the length of the of yeah. each bar but then what's the the gradient what does that mean it's just highest to lowest so that the, the really dark is the highest and the, the highest the, weight the lighter mm-hmm. yeah oh i was thinking it was something else that i wasn't reading <laughs> <laughs> all right and then the next one uh, we only got ten minutes, and I got I got to get to the ones we're going to suck. This one was done by uh, this this uh, Zen master. I think, yeah, he works, yeah. I think he works for the Information Lab in the UK. Super interesting. Ooh. So he does a timeline from 1775 through 2020, I think. And uh, and when you hover on a point, you can see not only what that that bubble uh, is supposed to indicate, but it also tells you on how many. Like how many wars we were in at that time. Let me ref- get this refreshed. So I'm going to go to like one of these after it loads. So I think he's from Italy, right? So is he an Italian? Yeah. yeah, I think so. So yeah, um, we'll go down so we can see a little bit. So, so these are all the wars. Wow. Yeah. Now, so it got a little more. When you hover, what happens usually? So, so it, get, it got a little confusing when you're like, there's a bunch here, and you don't know which way the the time flow is going. But outside of that, so when you hover on a, a point, it, it gives you the number of conflicts wow. in that year. Wow. wow. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's a clever use of the tooltip, and we can see that here we can learn that with this tooltip. I mean, he's putting more information in the tooltip that anybody can do this, right? You, you can put more information on Tutti and use more of that more effectively. Yeah, what, what um, I also liked yeah. is if the use of the colors. So look, war is the red and peace is the blue. It's that simple. Oh. And, and as you oh, screw really through, cool. look at the, the, the very few years where we have no conflicts. It's oh, just goodness. all red. We have a little bit of peace here before World War II, uh, a little bit of peace before the Korean War. 
And then ever since, we had one one year, I think, in 1985 here, where we had zero. Wow. That is crazy. But it also is uh, subjective on what they consider conflict. Uh-huh. And right. like how, how involved is America in those conflicts? So here are the eight that they have listed for 2020. Like the U.S.-Iran conflict, like, that that's been going on for decades, so like that's that's being considered here as a conflict. Um, so it's kind of subjective on how you how you want to determine that. But I just love the the just the flow of time all the way down, being able to hover on see how many conflicts, see see what was listed in there. Just super interesting. All right, and then the last one is the one that I actually wanted to talk about. Sorry, it took me about twenty minutes to get to this point. Cool stuff. So here we're looking at World War II aerial bombings. And the, the reason I wanted uh, to do this one is because my grandfather blew, uh, was in this B-17 Flying Fortress. And what I liked about it is, so if you click on the, the aircraft, it then gives you a picture here. It shows you where they were here on uh, in, in Europe and looks like they were kind of scattered everywhere else. Uh, but it says, for more information about the aircraft, Click here. So when, when I clicked on that, so it gives me this picture of, and I don't know where this militaryfactory.com, so it just takes me to this site. And you can see which plane that you've clicked on. So the only reason I wanted to bring this up was because this little turret is where my grandfather was uh, under the plane. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he was in that little ball underneath the plane uh, shooting the guns. Oh, so wow. right, right here. It's really, really small, but he had. He had to squeeze in that tiny little compartment. Uh, but uh, so you can click on any of the of the aircraft. You can see where uh, they had. They also so it's a little it's a little outdated. I think this was 20, 2017. So it looks like it's got a little you know this, this is kind of squished in here. There's a scroll bar for the for the colors, uh, mm -hmm. but you can't you can't click on a color and see where those were were dropped. Um, you can. You can also zoom in to certain parts of the, of the countries if you want. Mm -hmm. You can see it a little clearer. Uh, oh, down, down here, it's got a graph that tells. Uh, so I, I clicked on the B-17, and it's got the, the graph of, well, you can't really see it all that well, of how many, I, I would assume it's how many, how many, hmm, I don't know if it's missions. Mm. Might be missions. Well, let me let me hover on it. it. Just says number of records, so I don't know if that's no. if that's mm. missions or if that's like the number of bombs they dropped. That okay. I don't know. That color is tough on black. Yeah, it, so, it, the color is yeah. tough on black. That's what yeah. we, we can start. I mean, this could be. Um, there we go. What if you do the check mark? Maybe that's that tells you the okay. There we go. Okay. That must have had something selected. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like Tito said, the, the, the color is tough. I mean, we could, that could be improved, right? For sure. Right. Um, I do like what they're trying to do. I mean, you can select your, your specific uh, plane, mm -hmm. and then you can see on the left, maybe that, that scroll bar. I'm not sure what, why is that? Um, yeah, they, it looks like they did, they just didn't cover that. Uh, Get rid of this ABC mm. box in Tableau. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I like that. I like it's like number of missions per country, so you can see like which. Obviously, it was the Americans that had most of them, but like, why is there twenty four thousand unknown? Yeah. So they don't know who the, the data is not, not very good. Yeah. And then you have to scroll for the legend too. Yeah. Ooh. So again, it, it, it just could use a little bit of like sizing changes, like the map maybe doesn't be that big, you know. Right. Definitely need some formatting for sure. Mm. But at least I mean you can select, I mean, I like the title, the thing on the left, uh, easy to find. Um, it's trying to give you a uh, at least you can see the countries with the flag. Yeah, it doesn't have it doesn't have a lot of information. There's only mm -hmm. There's only these numbers and one and one graph and one map. So there's not there's not the story like we've seen in the other ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like I, I unchecked 
the the one plane I had selected. And now you can see the number of missions that happen per country, just total missions. Mm. There's the atomic bombs came in there too. Oh, I was wondering why you had nulls on like the second or the third and the fourth flag down. Um, it's because they don't have B-17s, I guess, or they didn't have yes. B-17s. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And Very I don't think, you, like, none of the data points do anything. Um, so. Mm. Does anybody have any questions? If you put in the chat about this visualization, let me know. Anything that you want to ask for now about it? Um, I think the color, right? The color of the background, but maybe instead of being black, it could be um, easier to to follow. Is this, if it's white or something more clear, for sure. Um, yeah, it, it definitely, it takes so much, I think, um, as far as like looking at the different flags and trying to figure out what those flags are. And then with the black, and then the, the dark blue field on the flags, it's tough to see like the actual shape of the flag. <laughs> so it's like, you know, what in the world is going on? Um, so if you hover a flag, does it tell you what country that is? Let me check. Let me uh, just want to restart it from scratch. And, then, and again, like, they, like this defaulted to this selected. So that's a little, mm -hmm. a little quirky too. Wow. Okay. And okay. No, it looks like it doesn't. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So most of the data, it's uh, could it be from the forties, fifties? I think. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, showing the data from other years or. Hmm. Okay. So. Cool. I don't think there's any more questions on the chat. Um, just want to, so we're almost close to the end of the show today. Uh, we want to provide uh, some reminders. Uh, Aaron, thank you so much. I mean, I really, really like the many different ones that you're showing today. Everybody brought in really cool uh, examples of data related to the military. Um, I wanted to, um, Aaron, the, the next week we have um, the, the topic is e-commerce. So anybody can sign up for e-commerce. So, you know, we, we decided to use e-commerce since anybody probably is buying Christmas present as Amazon or you're buying something online right now at Best Buy. I'm, I myself am buying a couple of things online uh, this weekend. So it, we thought, you know, it's very important to understand better data related to e-commerce because if you work in any company right now, you probably are selling something uh, online. And our build, you probably have to build some data dashboards or uh, visualizations related to uh, online sales. So we're gonna have uh, e-commerce data. We have some. We're gonna have some great experts next week uh, that deal and work with data visualizations related to web data or data related to online sales. Um, also, we wanted to say everyone that you know data meaning uh, our company data meaning it's hiring. So if you or know anybody that uh it's a tableau expert or altrix expert or have any altrix or tableau uh, certifications uh we would like we would love to talk to you uh and please let us know uh, you can contact any of us uh at data meaning or go to datameaning.com and you will find uh, some of these jobs uh, we're looking for we actually need a lot of people um related to altrix and tableau and any other bi tool we will welcome to you for you to apply um, and also, uh, if, like I said, if you want to participate in the show, we have weeks all the way to almost uh, <laughs> May or June next year. So uh, let us know if anything that you want to um, uh, participate, uh, more than welcome to participate with us here. Anything else, Aaron, you wanted to, to add? Or, or... No, I, I put in the, uh, in the comments the link to the sign up, uh, which we have through at least right now we have through May 4th, which happens to be May the 4th be with you. So that topic is Star Wars. Uh, we already have somebody sign up. So some, we have two more spots if people want to get in there. Ooh, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So there's John. He's still a, a John. Uh, check Altrix, uh, Google. Yeah. Uh, 
He's a friend of mine, and he's oh. good at all this. He's oh, just being he crazy. Was, uh, I thought he was uh, laughing. Okay, no, but you know, if, if anybody, um, welcome to participate, welcome to apply to many of the jobs that we have available right now. Uh, Tito, uh, it was great to, to have you here. Uh, we're definitely going to have more uh, episodes related to the military, and we would love to, to have you here. It's an honor to, to be with you. Yeah, thanks, um, man, for having me. Thank you. So anything else uh, anybody wants to say? Uh, thank you for, uh, we have Erica in the comments. Thank you, Erica, for always participating with us. Um, and anyway, just to next week for everyone. And thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Uh, if you're going to vacation, have a safe vacation. And thank you for everyone to attend and, and hope to see you next week. Thank you so much. See you guys. Right. Thank you, Tito. Bye.